In this video, we'll look at the relationship between marginal cost and marginal revenue. And we'll just set up the model in this video so that in future videos, we can look at how prices are determined in different types of markets, for example, in a monopoly market or in perfect competition. We'll start with the marginal cost curve. The marginal cost curve looks like this. The marginal cost curve shows the cost of each extra unit of output. The marginal cost falls at low levels of output and that's because there are increasing marginal returns on every extra unit of input which is added. But eventually the law of diminishing returns will set in and that means the returns on each input will increase at a decreasing rate and therefore the cost of producing each extra unit of output will start to increase. The marginal cost curve will look different in different types of markets. The marginal revenue curve is the extra, shows the extra revenue that a business will receive from increasing its output. I'm going to use an example from a perfect competition market. In perfect competition, businesses cannot set the price. They have to charge whichever price is the, uh, is the market price. So we'll call this PL. And this price level means that for every unit of output which the business sells, they'll receive PL as the price for that unit. Now we will expect from other economics videos that we've, that we've looked at that we're going to end up at the equilibrium point where marginal cost and marginal revenue intersect. And that's true again for this video, but we're going to have a look at why that is. If the business started to produce at this level of production, which is Q1, we can see that this product, this, this Q1 product that they've produced, the marginal revenue is at that PL level. That's how much money the business receives from selling that product, because that's the price level. The cost of the business is seen on the marginal cost curve, of that particular product will only be down here at P1. So by producing that Q1 product, the business gets more revenue than, than it costs to make the product, so therefore the business is making a profit. And if it were to move its production further along and increase their production from Q1 to Q2, that would be a smart business decision to make because the revenue received for that product is still at PL and the cost is still down here below uh, the revenue that which they received for that product. So the business is still making a profit. And that will continue all the way along until we reach the equilibrium point. And at this point here, at the equilibrium point, and we'll call that point QE, the revenue received for making that product is equal to the cost received, uh, the cost which, uh, which the business had to pay in order to make that product. If the business were to increase production further, so now if we move the production beyond that intersection point, past QE to Q3, the revenue which re is received for making that unit is still at MR, is still at the PL level but the cost of making that product is higher. So therefore, by making that extra product, the business is paying P2 to make that product and only receiving PL, that price level PL, is the revenue they're receiving for making that product. Therefore, the business makes a loss if they sell that Q3 product, if they produce that product at, up at the level Q3. So therefore, all the way up until QE, the business is making extra profit by making more products. Beyond QE, they'll start to make less product. So therefore, the best business decision uh, will be to produce up until that QE level.